Well, a very big hello to all of you, wherever you are, especially to those of you who are overseas or in other places in the country. Really just want to welcome you. Thank you for joining us. And a very special happy Mother's Day to all our mothers. And we just pray God's blessing upon your lives. Well, we're busy with a series on powerful voices. And I want to share with you today the third part to that series. Let me just recap very, very briefly. We started off in the first part of the series and we spoke about our own voice. In other words, our self-talk. Why is that so important? Well, we said there's no other voice more powerful or more influential in your life than your own voice because nobody talks to you as much as you do. And so it's so important for us to just identify our self-talk, especially if that self-talk is perhaps a little bit negative, to be able to identify that and then to correct that because that determines the course of our lives. And then last week, we looked at another powerful voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit. And we said it's our privilege as believers to have the voice of Almighty God speak to us, to help us and direct us and guide us. And, and He wants to do that, of course. And so we looked at the six different ways that the Holy Spirit leads us. And if we can identify those different areas in our lives, the different ways that He speaks to us, it's easier to identify His voice. And so today we're going to look at another powerful voice, and that's the voice of our friends. Now, I'm not referring to the likes on Facebook or the followers on Instagram, or I'm not even referring to, you know, the colleague at work that you speak to occasionally. You know, some of them we're closer to than others, but the one that you speak to occasionally, I, I, I'm not referring to the person in the gym, you know, that you interact with now and again. Those aren't the people I'm referring to because they don't really have a voice in your life and in my life. They don't really have influence over us. But I am referring to those friends that we're a lot closer to and what they wear and what they drive and who they are and what they believe. Those things are important to us, and those things certainly have, have an influence in our lives. And so we want to have a look at those today. Now, you would think that with social media and Facebook and Instagram and, and all of this, that we would be better connected today than ever before. But do you know that research shows that we are less connected, really? that we are more lonely, that we are more isolated than ever before. And what's interesting, when you look at the Bible, the Bible is all about connections. It's all about friendships. You go all the way back here to the beginning of the Bible, to Genesis, and you'll see the first friendship between God and Adam and how God would walk with Adam in, in the evenings in the cool of night. And then God noticed that Adam was, was alone. He needed friendship. And so what did he do? He brought Eve alongside. And, and so they become best friends because really our spouse is supposed to be our best friend. And then later on you read how God had a relationship with Abraham. And Abraham is even referred to as a, as a friend of God. And so this theme of friendship continues right through the Bible. So let's see what the Bible says about friends, because after all, this is the instruction manual to our lives. This is the direction to our, our destiny. You could say it's the blueprint to the best life you can possibly live. And so the Bible says in, in Proverbs 18.24, it says, One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. One who has unreliable friends, but there is another type of friend. So what the Bible is saying, there are two very distinct type of friends in our lives. They are the friends where we think they are our friends, and we think they committed to us, and they're reliable, and they'll back us. And, but then down the line, we discover they are unreliable. 
And then there are the other friends who we have family, but these friends are perhaps even closer than family. And so what the Bible is saying is if you have these kind of friends, the unreliable friends, the ones you think who are your friends, but it turns out they not, or you go through difficult times and suddenly they, they, they disappear. He said, you got friends like that in your life? He says, you're going to be in trouble. It's going to cost you. It's going to ruin your life. Why is that? It's because we all go through difficult times in our lives, every single one of us. And those are the times where we need friends, where we need help, we need support. Sometimes we even need their perspective. And so it's so easy for us to go through life and to think we, we don't really need them. But oh, I'm telling you, we need those friends because we all go through difficult times. And if nothing has ever hit your life that required those kind of friends and that kind of support, I just want to say to you, keep living, keep going, because it's just a matter of time. And you're going to discover one day that you need support. You need the people around about you. Now, the Bible says one who has unreliable friends soon, soon comes to ruin. Not immediately, but soon. Why is that? Because we may initially think that we are right. We go through a tough time. We're carrying some kind of burden, but it's okay. You know, I, I can do this, and I'm carrying this weight and that's fine. <laughs> it's no problem. This thing is really not heavy. You know, they say it's, it's a two-liter bottle, <laughs> piece of cake. And so the problem is, the longer I carry this weight, the longer I carry this burden, I'm telling you, eventually it starts weighing me down. And this thing eventually starts becoming heavier and heavier. The longer you carry a burden, the heavier it becomes. And so initially it was fun, and I thought, man, I can do this. I don't really need friends. You know, I'm, I'm good. Man, and down the line, it's like this thing is heavy, and all I need is I just need somebody to come along and just take that burden. It's like, man, I can just rest a little bit. You know, I can just... Ah, I can just breathe. And then down the line, I can take that burden again. I'm good again. I just need somebody to come and carry my burden. That's what the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6. It says, carry one another's cokes. All right. Carry one another's burdens. We weren't supposed to be doing life on our own. God never intended for us to operate like that. He says, you've got to carry one another's burden and in this fulfill the law of Christ. What law is he referring to? Not the laws of Moses, all the many laws that Moses passed down. He's referring to the law of Christ. What was that law? Jesus gave it to us in, in John chapter 15 where he says, love one another. He says, this one law, this one commandment, encompasses all the other commandments. He says, you've got to love one another. And so when you and I help a friend who's battling, who's buckling under the burden, when we come alongside and, and we, we help them, we're fulfilling that law. When we come and we just listen to somebody, you see, sometimes all you've got to do is just listen, just be there. And as guys, typically, we don't listen well because we want to fix it. And so they start talking and we're looking for an answer. We want to come up with a solution. We fix it kind of people. And sometimes we blow it because they don't need us to fix it. They need us to listen. And this is where the ladies are great because most of the time they'll come and say, Oh, shame, friend. And then... What? <laughs> so they're good listeners, and that's good. And so sometimes all we've got to do is, is listen. Other times, maybe pick up the kids, take them to school because, because the mom is in hospital. Maybe take a meal because there's some kind of crisis. Maybe you need to pay the bills for a friend. 
because because they just can't pay it at the moment. They're just going through a difficult time. Whenever you and I do those those practical, small little things, what are we doing? We're taking that burden. We're carrying their burden for a while. We're making it easier. And, and what are we doing? We're fulfilling the law. We're fulfilling that commandment that Jesus gave in John chapter 15, to love one another. Now, I realize some people have never experienced this kind of love. They don't know what it is. You know, they, they didn't grow up with it. They didn't see their parents with that kind of, kind of friendships where people come along and, and help them and support them and, and carry them where need be. They grew up with their parents. Their parents had, had some friends, but then down the line, they, they had another friend. And, and then down the line, they had another friend, but they weren't friendships where they did life together for 10, 20 30 years, and so they, they're not used to that, and so they, they didn't grow up with that, they didn't see that, they don't know anything about it, and so what happens, they end up, they end up learning to function in their dysfunction, and so their abnormal existence almost becomes normal to them, they, they don't know anything else, and so when normal comes along, and when normal says to them, hey, let me help you. It's like, no, 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 I, I'm okay. No, let me help you. Let me, let me carry that for you. Let me pay that for you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why do you want to do that? Nobody's ever done that for me. What's the catch? <laughs> There's no catch. We friends. That's what friends do. <laughs> and so what happens? The abnormal existence has become normal. They don't even realize it's abnormal. They, they're living on their own. They, they don't rely on friends. They don't have good friends around them. And so when the good friend comes and says, hey, let me help you. Let me get that for you. No, no, no. I, I, I'm okay. I'm, I'm good. No, you're not okay. You're not good. And the problem is you don't even realize that. And so one who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin because they don't even realize they need reliable friends. They don't even realize how important that is. So what is the criteria for somebody to be a friend? Well, I guess that we like one another, isn't it? <laughs> no, 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 not really. You see, the mistake that we make is we think if we like somebody and, and, and if, they, if we sense they like us back, oh, we're friends. <laughs> but the biblical perspective is very, very different. Because you see, from, from a biblical perspective, friends become family. You may not be blood, but there's a bond. You may not be connected by blood, but you're connected by an incredible bond. And so what I want to do quickly is I want to share three types of friends with you quickly. Just There, there are many more. Let me just say to you up front. There are quite a, quite a few more types of friends in our lives. But for, for the purpose of today's talk, I just want to share these three types quickly. And it, it'll help you understand. And you'll see why I'm doing that and where we're going with it. And so the first type is this type that the Bible talks about. The friend that sticks closer than a brother. These are the closest, closest friends that you can have. And I want to say to you up front, you won't have many of them in your life. You'll, you'll probably just, just have a couple. Some people go through life never having these kind of friends. And so these are our close friends. These are the friends who are for us. They believe in us, and they love us unconditionally. Whether we up or down, whether we right or wrong, whether we, we mess up or blow it, they, they're for us, they're committed to us, they, they'll walk with us. And so it doesn't matter whether, whether we get into trouble, they'll be there. If other people are gunning for us, they've got our back. They'll give us the benefit of the doubt, and, and they'll try and protect us as much as possible. These are the friends that do life with us. They are long-term friends. They're in it for the long haul, these friends. And so these are the people that you can, you can trust. 
you can share your life, your heart, your, your innermost. You can share with them and it will be safe with them. These are precious, precious friends. Now, let me just say to you quickly, these friends won't only comfort you. They will also confront you if need be. So if you blow it, they'll tell you. When you mess up, they'll tell you. Because they love us too much to just leave us the way we are and to see us self-destruct. And so what happens, they come alongside of us and sometimes they'll come and correct. So that's a smaller group of friends. If, if you have two or three or a handful of them, let me tell you, in your entire lifetime, you are rich. So those are the close friends. Let's move on quickly to the second group. And these are the casual friends. So these friends aren't really for you. They, they for what you are for. And so you for the same stuff. And so they're not really for you, but they for what you are for. And as long as you are for that, then, then they'll be friends. And then they'll walk with you. And, and it may appear that they're friends. It may appear that they're close. But don't make the mistake of seeing them as, as close friends and relying on them. And don't think that they're going to be committed to you. Because you'll find with casual friends they're actually more committed to their own agenda than they are to you. And so if somebody else comes along that can further their agenda, man, they'll drop you like a hot potato and they'll go to that other person. They'll jump ship, as it were, because they're more committed to their own agenda. And don't get upset when they leave because that's what that group does. It's almost like they're a little bit more selfish. They're looking after their own interests. They're more committed to their own interests than they are to you. And so we have the close friends, and then we have the casual friends, and yes, the third group, the comrades. Now, the comrades, they aren't really for you, nor are they for what you are for. They are against what you're against. And so the thing that you have in common is that you're against the same thing. So you could almost say you have this common enemy. And so you may initially see them as your newfound friend and you're getting along and you're clicking and, and all of that. But it's not quite true because they're against what you're against. You have the common enemy. And so when you don't have that enemy anymore, when, when the war is over, suddenly you find the friendship is over and, and they disappear. Now, the point of this, the reason I've shared this with you, is that you and I need to understand the different types of relationships. And, and if you don't see these three types of relationships clearly, what will happen is you'll put the wrong expectation on the wrong group. And you'll possibly make the wrong investment into the wrong group. And down the line, you get hurt and burnt and disappointed and sometimes that's even where we become cynical about people and it's like you know people just can't be trusted anymore and, and you know and I'm committed and they just walk away and and all of that and but it's simply because we don't understand these different groups of people so how do we develop those close relationships because remember I said some people never have that in their lives you know why because they're not intentionally developing those relationships. How do we do that? How do we develop what the Bible calls a friendship that's closer than a brother? Because you can have that and I can have that where, where you may even be close to your family and you get along with them, but there are certain friends that you and I have where we are even closer than, than our own family. And so here are a couple of thoughts to consider. I just want to share these thoughts with you quickly. Close friends get a different kind of access. What do I mean by that? Well, I think as Christians, we should love people biblically and value them equally. But we treat them differently. So we love them biblically according to Scripture we value them equally because God values all men and women the same. He sent Jesus for them. 
but we treat them differently. And it may sound wrong, but I'm going to show you, and even Jesus did that, we treat them differently. Because if you think about it, we don't treat our close friends exactly the same as everybody else. We don't expose our heart to everybody else. We do that to, to close friends only. And so love is freely given, but access is earned. That happens over a period of time where we allow people closer and closer and closer to us. And you'll find people who are reckless with their access, where they just allow anybody in and they share anything and everything, those are the people who get hurt and burnt and disappointed. And those are the people who will say, ah, oh, you know, people today, you know, people can't be trusted and people do this and people do that and people don't. <laughs> the problem is not with people. The problem is with the access that you've granted to the wrong people. And you'll hear people say, oh, you know what? I, I just, I, I wish she won't go around telling everybody what's happening in my life. Well, maybe you need to not go around telling her everything that's happening in your life. You know, you'll be amazed how many people are more guarded with their house than they are with their heart. And the Bible tells us above all else, guard your heart. Be careful who you share what with. You know, some people will, will say, oh, but you know what? I tell you everything that's happening in my life. But you don't tell me everything. <laughs> you can't really say it, but you want to say it. You tell me everything because I can keep my mouth shut. <laughs> but I can't tell you everything. Because, all right, now you can't really say that, but that's why we can't share with everybody. But Leonard, you know, she shares everything with me. I need to share with her. No, 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 no. Close people get a different kind of access. Be careful who you share with. Don't do that. Even Jesus didn't give everybody the same kind of access. He ministered and fed the 5,000. He laid hands on the 70. He taught the 12, mentored the 12. But he walked closely to the three. You see, we've got to be able to differentiate between the different kind of people in our lives and give them different access. All right. Let me give you the next one quickly. Close friends get a different kind of access. And close friends also have a different kind of commitment. You see, close friends aren't fair-weather friends, where they hang around when everything is going great and, and things are good, life is good, and, and then they're around, you know, almost like the prodigal son, when he had lots of money, there were lots of friends, but the moment the money ran out, the moment things started going wrong, what happens with casual friends or fair-weather friends? Man, they vanish like the mist in the morning sun. They just, suddenly they're gone. And you'll find close friends don't do that. They, they there. They stick with you. Even when, when you hurt them, they'll say, you know, you hurt me, but I'm staying. And you disappointed me, <laughs> but I'm staying. And you did a crazy thing back there. I think you're nuts, but I'm staying. I'm I'm not leaving. And so that's what happens with, with close friends. There's a different kind of commitment. Do you know one day Jesus was busy teaching the crowds, and he said to them, he said, you know, when, when Moses gave the children of Israel manna in the desert, it wasn't Moses really feeding them. It was God giving them bread from heaven. He says, but now... God has got the true bread from heaven for you. God wants to give you that bread. And so the people are listening to that and they're going, Oh, sir, sir, give us that bread then. <laughs> and Jesus says to them, he says, I am that bread. And they listen to that and it's kind of confusing. It doesn't make sense. They're looking at one another. It's like, what is he talking about? They, they didn't understand. He was speaking figuratively. And so they, they, they're looking at this, and, and it's confusing. And they're saying to one another, this guy's strange. 
you know, this, this guy's nuts. He's calling himself a bread. And what happens? The Bible says many people turned away. Many people turned away and deserted him. And Jesus turns to Simon Peter and he says, Are you too going to turn away? Are you going to walk away as well? Simon Peter says to him, he says, Master, <laughs> where will we go? He basically says, he says, we friends, we close. You see, and close friends have a different kind of commitment. You'll find they committed when others walk away. Close friends will walk with you even when it's uphill. Close friends will defend you even when others are trying to get to you. When others are trying to, to badmouth you, they'll defend you. They'll, they'll cover your back. All right. So we said close friends have a different kind of access. They also have a different kind of commitment. And close friends, here's the next one, have a different kind of expectation. Different expectation. Think about it. We expect certain things from our close friends that we don't expect from, from everybody else. We don't have that same kind of expectation on them as, as we have on our close friends. You see, with our close friends, it's almost like we expect them to give us benefit of the doubt. We expect them to have our back. We expect them to cover our nakedness and not to go and expose our nakedness to, to everybody else, to go and expose our, our, our faults. But, but they're going to they're gonna walk with us. And, and there's, a, there's a different kind of expectation. Do you know that even Jesus had a different expectation on some of the disciples, even the, the 12 who were close to him? But there were three of them that he had a different expectation. Because when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, those were the guys that he took with him. And his expectation was that they would stand with him, they would support him, they would pray with him. The other guys, ah, he just knew. <laughs> you know, they, they may be a little bit casual. They're not going to be able to, to support. They won't really pray, you know. It's those friends that say, oh, praying for you, praying for you. But you just know there's not a chance that they're going to actually be praying for you. And Jesus knew these friends would do that. He had that expectation, and so he takes him with him. You and I know what happened. You know, instead of praying with Jesus, they fall asleep. And I can imagine Jesus coming and saying to them, guys, come on. You know, I'm not asking you to, to raise the dead and, and, and heal the blind. I'm just asking you to pray with me. Come on. <laughs> and they couldn't do that, and they didn't do that. But you see, my point is there was a different expectation. Even Jesus had that. All right, let's quickly have a look at the last one. Close friends get a different kind of investment. You and I have limited time, meaning we can't give the same amount of time and investment to everybody. That's just the reality. It's sorry to say, but, but there's no ways that we can do that. And so we've got to, we've got to make sure who our close friends are. We, we've got to identify who are the people whom we value in our lives, the people that we want to have closer relationships with. And those are the people that we want to invest in, invest our time and our energy and sometimes even, even our money. Because think about it. You go the extra mile for close friends. You, you'll invest. You, you go the extra mile. You'll get up at midnight for close friends. You'll board a plane and go and be with them. You know, you pay money. It, it doesn't matter without expecting anything in return. You'll help close friends financially. You see, there's somehow there's just, there's, there's a different kind of investment when it comes to close friends. And Jesus taught this in Matthew chapter 7. He says, don't throw your pearls in front of the swine. You know what he's saying is he's, he's basically saying, you've got to differentiate. <laughs> you've got to differentiate who your close friends are and who the swine are. No, 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 I'm just joking. Who the close friends are and who are those who are the casual friends or the comrades. And you throw your pearls, your investment to them. You see, developing close relationships are going to cost you. There's no doubt about it. 
Investments cost us. You don't get it for free for nothing. It costs us. But it's investments that very often heal the return. Not guaranteed. And it's the same in relationship. You invest in close friends. It's not guaranteed that you're going to have return. But it's, it's normally it's investments that yield a, a return. When you, when you invest in those people, I'm telling you, what is the return? That you get something? Well, you get a close friend. And let me tell you, there's nothing more precious and special on the face of this earth is to have close, close friends. Friends that we've been walking with for 10 or 20 or 30 years. But it, it's going to cost you. You're going to have to invest. And some people don't want to do that. They don't even really want to take the effort to make a phone call. Why do I need to phone? They don't even want to really invite people over and all of that. No, 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 no. You know, it, it's too much effort. <laughs> but when the wheels come off, then they can't understand why they don't have people around them rallying and helping them. And that's where the Bible says, where your life comes to ruin. Because in the moments where you and I need the friends around about us, they are not there unless we've invested in, in those friends. So let me wrap this up. Let me just say to you quickly, we live in a world where communication has never been easier. Phones and email and social media, it has never been easier, but here's the problem. It seems like the more communication we have, the less connections we have. And some people have traded connection for communication. And so they're communicating big time, big time, big time, all the time. And they don't realize they've sacrificed connection. They're communicating, which is an open thing, but they don't have this bond, this connection. And so we've got to be intentional about connecting and spending time and investing. Do you know we read in the New Testament, we read this again and again, they went from house to house and broke bread. And it's not necessarily referring to communion. Oh, no, it's referring to them having a meal together, spending time together, fellowshipping together. And that's why I think so many of the small groups at the moment are thriving and doing so well because people are just getting together. I'm seeing that. I'm hearing about these, these groups that are just drawing together. During the pandemic, they've just realized we need one another. And they're coming together. And many of the small groups are just exploding, are just doing so well. Because basically, they're following the biblical pattern there. And also, when, when we just spend time around the table, just just eating together. And it doesn't have to be fancy. And it doesn't have to be expensive where you spend a lot of money. Sometimes, man, if you've got a fresh bread that's just come out the oven and, and you can just break bread together and, and have bread and cheese and jam, maybe a little bit of peanut butter as well. What happens when you spend time with people like that? You start forming closer and closer relationships. And so I just want to encourage you our close friends have powerful voices in our lives. And if you don't have them, if you only have casual friends or comrades, you're never going to enjoy that close voice in your life. Come on, let's pray together. Father, thank you for the precious people that you've put in our lives. And some of those people are close to us. And we've been doing life together. We've been doing 20, maybe 30, 40 years. And we want to pause today and say, thank you, thank you. God, help us to look after these relationships, to value them and protect them. And for some of us, Lord, who don't really have those kind of relationships yet, help us, Father, to start seeking them out, godly men and women, and to start developing those relationships in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you.